Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another great edition of my Guru Room Show. And for the Guru Room Show today, we've got a very amazing guest, and she is an actress and a musician, and her name is Grace Chim. And she has a brand new song out called Safe and Sound, and we're going to talk to her about her, her roles in acting as well. I am Rocco Cross. I am the host at Stutters. I am the host of the Guru Room. And my interview with Grace will be coming up very soon. This is my Guru Room. And as always, welcome to my nightmare. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right. Um, welcome to Guru. And thank you so much for taking time out of your day and coming on. Thank you for having me yeah definitely definitely <laughs> <laughs> so like the first thing i wanted to ask you is um i saw you grew up in in indo do, do, donesia you got it you got it <laughs> you moved to new new york so how how was that move like i mean going from indonesia to the the city that never sleeps. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. That is a whole life story right there. So um, yeah, um, I've just been very fortunate because um, I actually um, have lived across various places in the world. I was born in New Zealand, actually. And then I grew up in Indonesia. My mom's Indonesian. Um, so basically my whole life was there. Um, and that was the first time I've ever had my first feature film. Um, but I moved to Australia first to do my um, college degree because my mom was full Asian and was like, you can't just go doing acting and everything else. You got to do a stable career. And so that's what I did. I had a stable career in marketing. Yeah. Bless my mom. Um, and I said to myself, I just can't do it for the rest of my life because I was just stuck in this dead end job. Um, a, a bit like Simu Liu's story where he was like, you know what, just F it and just yes. drop everything. Yeah. yeah. And so um, I finally pursued my dreams and applied to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Hey, okay. hey, for alumni. Um, and moved to New York uh, on a scholarship and it just started from there. Yeah. Wow. Oh, okay. So <laughs> is that where you, currently live at now too i am in london city oh, um, so <laughs> oh yeah that's right you, you 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 did mention that in the post that you're on london yeah. time yes yeah yeah um it's, <laughs> i've just been very fortunate to sort of um just travel around the world um because after the pandemic um new york was just you know a bust um so i, I just had to move to australia um and funny enough i actually was able to work on um, a marvel production there um, but then after finishing in Australia, then I had to move to London because there's just so much more things for film and TV in here. So, yeah, let's just. Wow. <laughs> OK, so so now is it is it true what they say there? Is there like a, a certain a certain time where everyone drinks tea? Like, that's what I heard. Like, they like drink a... tea every hour. <laughs> <laughs> it was very shocking because I, I'm a coffee drinker and then yeah. now I'm just like tea, 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 everything tea. Yeah. Okay. There you go. <laughs> so what what actually drew you to want to act? Like what made made you fall fall in love with it? Um you know what? I was one of those kids who um who grew up singing karaoke after school. Um, to Britney Spears. Oops, I did it again. Oh, there you um, go. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, my life story. Um, but, uh, you know, like my, all my family, my teachers, my friends told me that I was too, um, at that time, too large and too ugly and untalented to ever be like an artist of some sort, to ever be in acting or a superstar, essentially. Oh my um, God. And, these are deep, yeah. deep these are these are friends of yours and teachers yeah and, um, oh my families, God. yeah i went through a whole bullying um like life period like until i was in high school i think so it really kept me through my self-esteem and i think you know i've always loved i never gave up on that dream um but it was just something that was hidden i think for me i just never did it in like the light if that makes sense so um yeah um i've always just i guess um, once I stepped into the New York Academy film back, I'm sorry, American Academy, um, I sort of understood why I was in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my, my dad's always like, you have to be a doctor. I want you to be a doctor, I like to save lives and everything else. Um, but then I sort of see myself now as an emotional doctor. And that sort of keeps me going because I okay. feel like 
in society, like society, we're just told to like, just like, don't feel anything, you know, like just yeah. keep your feelings like hidden and everything else. And oh, I feel that, like, definitely. yeah, definitely. So I feel like when people just watch as like a TV or like a play or whatever it is, it just gives them space to sort of feel and be real. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so I, I love that I can just play characters that I can just allow people to relate to and just go through that emotional healing process, if that makes sense. Oh, so, no, totally. totally. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, I'm really happy you didn't listen to those idiots that were saying <laughs> that. Like, like uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy you went on the path and, and are doing what, what you love doing. Like, that's one thing that I can't stand is bull- bullying because I, I was bullied as yeah. a kid for, for my for my speech and stuff well kid and teenagers but, uh, so like yeah that's that's like one thing I don't like when I hear about the bullying and all so I'm really happy you, you yeah like, I'm so went glad forward and push push forward yeah um I actually really believe um it's such a brave thing for you to do as well and I know it's so hard to just push past those voices and you know, yeah. it, it just they never really go away, do they? It's it's just like in the no. back of your head, you just like You're right. go away. Um, You're right about that, yeah. Yeah, but I, I really truly truly really feel like you sort of build a thick thick skin, I guess, from that. And mm-hmm. it's sort of what you need in this industry anyway. So I'm You're right. very grateful for those people. Um, but you know, prove them wrong right exactly exactly <laughs> and that's what what you're doing now by doing all, all these different things you're doing from film you have the songs so so yeah, yeah. You're, you're you're definitely proving to them that that you're in it for the long haul <laughs> yeah. here to stay <laughs> exactly <laughs> so, <laughs> what was the first role you ever booked for 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 film or tv um, it was actually, I was an Indonesian star um, actor kid. Um, yeah. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, I got an opportunity to work for this um, really big feature film um, for this director. I, I'm sure you have no idea to how to spell or pronounce his name, but his name is Afan, Afandi Abdul Rahman. Like, oh, yeah, no. In the middle of his <laughs> <game>. yes. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful wonderful person um he's such a brilliant director um but um i i played this um, film called aqua Todia, which is a rom-com in indonesian which um, hit the feature film straight away um in the uh, theaters at that time it's one of those um big movies um but i got to play this very um spoiled rich kid um who was um hitting on one of the garage workers and yeah <laughs> It's very comedic sort of character, which is very fun. <laughs> oh wow, nice, nice. <laughs> and what 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 was it like for you to play in Jen on on Risen? Um, very interesting. Um, because I had to go from like one emotional um state to another emotional state really quickly. Oh, um, wow. Because, you know, we, we'd be working on this probably like 30 second scene mm-hmm. for like a whole day. Yeah. You yeah. know how it is. Yes. Right. So, um, yeah, uh, I had to sit in a very dark tight closet. I mean, it's already claustrophobic as it is. So it really helped me emotionally to sort of get there. Um, and um, I think it was just really interesting to sort of... Um, find those trigger points um that i could use to just get me from just um breaking to even more breaking points um so yeah um that was um a very i think um claustrophobic but yet very interesting experience for myself (laughs) that makes sense yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) and you're 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 also you were also on a a tv series bally bally 2022 yeah. so yeah. how how was how was that experience like i think that was one of do you know what um it's really interesting because being an asian in um in this industry and i know that you know we're on this place in this industry where you know ethnic diversity is celebrated nowadays which is mm-hmm. wonderful but the one thing that gets me frustrated is every time someone thinks of asia like as as a girl, they're they're always thinking whether you're Chinese, Korean, or Japanese, and it's so yeah. frustrating to me that like Indonesia has like just really rarely been like, I guess, known in the industry at large. 
So for me, that was one of my favorite experiences because A, we got to tell the story of the Bali bombings that happened like, oh. like 2000 and 2002. Um, that was for the 10 year anniversary of, you know, when that happened. Yeah. Um, so it was a huge privilege. I just honestly was one of those roles where I just didn't care about who I work with, even though it was just really big stars. Um, but it was just one of those movies that I was just doing for the sake of loving people. Now that makes sense. Um, because we just got a chance to just work together and tell stories of how these people just survived after their loved ones passed. And I'm getting really emotional talking about it because um, yeah, these um, growing up um, in the Bali bombing period, this actually happened um, very closely in our area. And just to be able to tell that story of just the heartache and pain that people went through, um, it was really a privilege. Um, not to mention, I think, being able to just celebrate the Indonesian history and just tell the world that we are here, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. Oh wow! The lot, that that's 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 awesome that you, you got to, to to actually tell tell the world about it. And yeah, um, and I got to really meet some cool people, um, like um, the Bridgerton star. Um, she was very friendly. Um, so yeah, there's lots of like really just top profile people that I um just was very human, and it was just such a wonderful opportunity to just sort of like just get to know them personally, up close and personally. Yeah. Oh, wow. Nice. Nice. And, you know, you also, like you were saying when we first started, um, you were part of the huge film, Marvel film, Shang, 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 Chi. And I, did you do stunts on that? Like I, I was looking at something. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so, so, so you're doing stunts on set for that. Yeah, and ever since then, my agent has been submitting me for a lot of action roles, and I'm like, how did I land here? It was, it was very funny enough. It was during COVID period, and um, they were putting up casting for like archers, um, for Shang Chi and stuff. And so yeah. somehow, for some <laughs> god blessed reason, I got to be a main archer and um Shang Chi, and it turned into a three month gig where it was just like being fed by Disney like <laughs> every single hour was the my favorite experience of like it wasn't even just the experience of just working with a whole Asian like team or yeah. like a whole Asian cast it was that was like nominal like never seen that anywhere oh, in the world. Yeah. yeah um so it was like I think that privilege was number one and just being able to you know have good laughs with Simu Liu and Aquafina they're cool very very cool people um but i think my favorite part is that disney just feeds as well they're very good at feeding us yeah well, i'm i'm sure for a movie as big as that especially in that world the mar the marvel world like they aren't gonna give you bad food <laughs> oh it was like i was like you know what this is like better than even like like fine dining food like honestly it was like that was like an appetizer main course dessert i was just like feeding us every hour fun times truly yeah like, like film 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 sets like big big film sets they always have like the best food because uh, i mean even like i was uh, 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 extra in um creed Wow. And, and, and on set for Crete, it didn't matter if you were an extra or one of the main actors, like they fed everyone the same. Yeah. Like the, the food that they had on set for Creed was um, like, and they, they said it was all picked by a uh, sly Sylvester S Stallone. Like he picked oh like the whole, the whole like food lineup every, every day. I wonder what his um choice of um dessert would be, I guess. <laughs> yeah, That's so it was, interesting. Yeah, it was uh, like, like I, I was shocked because I, I I was like they were like all right we're gonna break for um for breakfast and I was like <laughs> what the actors or 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 everyone no they, they're like everybody I says oh and, yeah. and and here and it was funny like the the I was there for like for like two for two weeks I took off of work for two weeks to be on Creek and um and I, I remember being on the set and 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 
I I actually like walked right right near Michael Michael B Jordan and he actually oh said goodness. yeah like he actually said hi to me and we and, and we chatted a little bit and I was like I was like oh my god wow <laughs> everyone's so lovely in this industry honestly like everyone's <laughs> yeah. just so warm and just inviting to be honest oh yeah definitely yeah so so I definitely know what you're talking about the food <laughs> yeah <laughs> so funny because everyone just keeps like saying oh my gosh you're in a marvel film and everything else and i can see you on screen and everything else and i'm like you know what the best thing i can remember was the food and that's it i was just there for the food so good <laughs> so when 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 you actually went and saw the film like you 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 saw yourself in it it was so weird because um i would have like people screenshotting faces of me like in the cinema and i'm like oh okay did not even see me there just like it, it became a race of like how many times can you spot grace in oh. the Shang-Chi films? so it was it was just really really weird um but no I had I had really good fun um I had good muscles coming out of it because obviously it was just every like 12 hour days like for three months yeah. uh, just like you know just putting up stunts um yes. Yeah, it was a dream to work with um, Andy Chung, who's like um, in the stunt world. He's like the god of like stunt choreographers. Oh, work. really? He's, he's like in the Jackie Chan sort of um, team uh, for oh, wow. stunt choreography. So he's done a lot of like, um, I guess, uh, big movie um, action choreography. So it was really interesting because coming from someone who um, who's not really like a full on martial artist sort of thing. I'm just like, therefore, like, I just shoot like bows and stuff. And he's like, okay, guys, you have to come up with your own fight choreography for the scene in like 15 minutes. And I'm like, ah, what do I do? <laughs> so, so it's just so funny because, um, you know, like when you're actually working with green screen and stuff, you don't see all these like dragons, like flying across the sky. Yeah, 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 exactly. And so everyone was just like showing off their Kung Fu moves and everything else. And I had nothing but a bowl. <laughs> so all I could do was I would just pretend it to be a victim. Like, and I was like, you know what, this is going to play well for me. Cause you know, uh -huh. I just, I uh, had to resolve my victim mentality going up. And so, you know what, I'm going to use this for my advantage. And so, um, I just um, just pretended to be like dragged around with like my bow with the dragon and stuff, like sliding <laughs> across the, the grass and everything. And they sort of used it. So I was like, all right, wonderful. Love oh playing. Oh my That's, God, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's, 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 that's really cool. <laughs> so have you been training long with like stunts and and stage stage combat yeah um i mean they offered it um in our college um but honestly it was just something that i've always been excited about you know i was like oh i love punching like people like for fake like looking cool and all these things because i right? can't really like i'm not really a violent person but i, I mean <laughs> i'm like I get it, you know? So I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to be like doing this and this. And all the stunt people were just like um, laughing at me because, you know, you'd think that you would like box while like hopping and stuff. And they're just yeah. like, no, that's not how you actually do it. That's embarrassing. Stop yourself. Um, so no, I have had no training experience in terms of like martial arts and stuff. I am now learning to pick up things. Um, I, I mean, outside of like just fitness and boxing and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I mean, that's like hand to hand combat, right? Um, it is, yeah. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's my special skill right there. Um, but um, I think uh, the big part was uh, I just um, had to like apply for classes after that because um, I was like, oh, you know what? This is actually a real thing that you can learn and apply to like films and stuff. And so, yeah, ever since then, I've just started to like work with like um, by choreographers to sort of uh, make an action reel. Um, and also just learn more like fight uh, stage combat stuff. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, that, that has to be cool uh, just to do that. I mean, I'm, I'm sure because you can't hold, hold, hold back your punches on every scene. So I'm sure accidents happen where you really, you really do hit, hit someone. But <laughs> it, it's, a, it's funny because you would think that it's like, um, it looks so real. And the funny thing is like, when you actually observe action movies mm -hmm. and you actually just my my um stage combat teacher told us to like watch like a lot of like Jackie Chan movies and all these like martial arts movies. Yeah. Um, and they told us, you know what, watch it frame by frame. And if you actually pause it, you could actually see how far apart they are and how slow 
the movements actually are and how really? the music that they put into the action films are actually the ones that influencing it and make it feel like it's faster. So it's actually slower than you think. And it's yeah, actually really, really? yeah, it is. Um, and, and like America and like the Western sort of like um, countries, they don't actually do the um, um, combats like, like, you know, contact wise. Yeah. But in China, Hong Kong, um, they actually do do it for real um oh, wow. so staying away from that like market but i am going to say <laughs> in the western market yeah <laughs> wow <laughs> and um you you act but you also sing and you have a new song safe and sound so what inspired you to want to write and make and make this song um Yay. Um, so, so timely because it just released like two days ago. So I'm just very grateful to be able to explain this. Um, I actually wrote the song back in 2015. Oh, wow. Uh, when I was still stuck in my dead end job and I didn't take, take a chance on my, you know, like dreams and stuff. So it just never came out of the closet. And now things have just like, I think two months ago, I just told myself, you know what, it's time to come out of the closet as a singer um, and just shut those um voices out um so um it's it's actually a, a christian sort of um inspired song because you know yeah i guess um i mean personally god has just been really the reason why i'm in this industry um so um i got a chance to work with a songwriter in melbourne together who's a christian as well um back then uh, i used to live in australia uh, which is melbourne um, and yeah, like we just um, talked about just surrendering to God and how being on our knees is actually the safest place we can because when we can't, God can. So yeah, I mean, that's just been the testimony of my life, just being called grace in itself, you know, just well, yeah. not deserving any of these opportunities, but truly it's just through my weakness that I can just depend on God. So that's just the whole focal point of the story of Safe and Sound. Oh, wow. That's really, that's really amazing. I like that. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Your name is Grace. Like I, I, cause yeah. I, I saw on, on your, your page, like, you know, you're, you're a follower of Christ of God. And then I, I and then I see your name now after you're saying that Grace, I'm like, oh, like wow, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> <laughs> It's just like appropriate, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> so, like, what does this song mean? Mean, mo mean, mean to you? Like, I, I, I know it has like a really deep, deep meaning. You were just saying how how passionate this song is about following God, following Christ. Mm -hmm. So, so like, how important is this song to you for like the whole the whole world to see and fans to hear it? I think, um, I mean, in the song itself, it's not really exclusively, like, I don't really say um, the word Christ or, um, you know, just um, say any God's name or whatever it is into mm -hmm. the song, because I, I wanted it to be something that was felt for people to sort of um, relate to, yeah. instead of, you know, shy away from and become relevant to people. Um, but I think, I hope that people can just feel that they just don't have to be strong and it's okay to not be strong. You know, I think one of the beauty of being in deep surrender is that I think a lot of people can tell you that when they're at the breaking point and they just don't know what to do anymore. I think that's when Calvary sort of like comes and suddenly like a miracle pops up out of nowhere and stuff. And oh wow. yeah, I think um, I just want people to know that things will be okay. And it has been, you know, I've had a lot of, um, things happen throughout my life that I had to like overcome, but it's always going to be okay. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. It, it, it's, it's, it's fine. Me, me being like a really huge horror fan, as you can see with Chucky in the background yeah. and, and like when people see that, like they, they, they think like, I, I like, I, I, I like, I'm, I'm on like a dark path or a bit. No, I, I, I actually, yeah. I went to Catholic school for 12 years. I, I go to church. I believe in God and I, I just happen to like horror too. Yeah. 
uh, like I, I grew up watching Saw. Like <laughs> I remember one of the um I used to go on this rant of like just go uh watching a lot of like um really psychologically disturbing movies. I'm not sure if you watched um perfume. Um no. what is that? Yeah. It's really disturbing and interesting, but I love the storyline. It's just so fresh. Um, but basically it's, um, so there's this um, orphan who, um, who grew up just go, like loving the sense of women and stuff. So he kidnaps women from like everywhere at night and stuff. And he kills them in a way that is clean and wraps them in like a linen or whatever it is to grab their oil or scent. And they just, he just combines like all like, different women's like scents in like a bottle and a vial oh and it becomes like the most wonderful like perfume and world crazy. so yeah i mean you know <laughs> that that sounds yeah that you're sounds just like, really stuck. You're, like going from like from a to b <laughs> i know right exactly <laughs> <laughs> and, and and you said you were you were a fan of the saw films too yeah, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, I they, were, they were yeah. they were great. They were great. Yeah, they were really, really like. I feel like um, when you talk about Saw, like everyone just sort of knows what Saw is. Oh, like, yeah, of course, Chucky, I stayed away from because I, <laughs> I was like, I had like a doll that like I grew up with that was just really like, like you know those baby dolls, and I was just like, okay, I can't watch this. Yeah, because yeah. then then you look at your doll and think that it's gonna come to life. <laughs> yeah, and just like keep on like stay away, stay away. <laughs> 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 what about like the classics like freddy and jason and michael myers and all yeah, that i i really don't think i mean to each their own but i really don't think that um western um horror movies are scary at all um, you know you know you're right about that because i i've i've seen a lot of international horror movies and they are really crazy and but that's what makes them good yeah, uh, and it's even more disturbing when you used to live in an Asian country watching oh, yeah, it. Yeah, that's so true. It's like, it's really like, you know, like growing up in Indonesia, like all these things are actually real things. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like voodoos and like yeah. there's a lot of like witch doctors and everything else. And I'm like, Lord Jesus, help me sleep. Um, it's just like, it was just really scary because, um, <laughs> oh my goodness, I, I've just had lots of interesting stories growing up. Like when I was like in high school, like, um, and I was at home alone, um, I had like a security guard uh, at my home who hung himself at my basement. Oh and my then God. like, like, you know, all the police came and everything else. And I was like, I was just alone at home and everything. But, you know, ever since then, I was like, I just couldn't like just go down to the kitchen like at night. It, yeah. It's really, really scary. Um, but oh my goodness, um, watching Asian horror movies like in Asia is a whole different experience. Oh wow! Yeah, I I can't imagine that because like watching it in uh, uh America, I'm, you know when when I first see them, I'm like, my God! I said this is this movie is effed up, <laughs> and then and, and then and then I and then that 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 makes me want to watch more of them, and and I I, <laughs> I watch like a whole section of like Asian horror movie, but like to actually watch it in Asia, you know in in indonesia or japan or yeah like that that that's like a whole a whole nother story <laughs> which one has to be like the scariest like asian horror movie that you've ever watched Ooh, let me see i'm trying to think now um what was that oh my god i can't think of the name now the <laughs> the woman who she's like a a, a dot doctor and she cuts up people and and oh i know what you mean I, it's like I, a I scissor um i know what you mean I yeah think it's, it might be korean or something like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly right? yeah. yes i can't think of the name of that now <laughs> they'll be like on your like weekend sort of list to sort of watch today <laughs> i know exactly <laughs> and, and i'm a big fan of Bay Bay uh, Ling, did you, did you ever hear of her? She was in the movie The Crow. Uh no, I haven't actually. Yeah, she 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 did a lot of 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 horror movies in Asia too. Like she she did like a couple Asian horror films, and and then she came over to the state oh, to goodness. to the USA, and 
and she like i interviewed her super super nice person and she told me like all the movies she did was in asia and she did like a few horror films too and then she came over to the united states and the first movie they put her in was the crow and i don't know if you're if you know what the, what the movie the crow is but that became such a huge film and a cult film yeah. like everything and bruce lee's son brandon lee was the star of that, and he actually yeah. died on set while making the movie wow and, and uh, awesome. yeah and she she was telling me when she first went on set she didn't know how to speak speak in 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 english and brandon wow. lee actually was the one that that helped her like he he helped her he helped her talk and he she said he he showed her how to play video games and oh, <laughs> yeah my gosh i i just i have a lot of admiration for like um people who actually act in horror movies because i just like i wouldn't be able to sleep after that do you know what i mean like like watching it <laughs> is one thing being at it is like another thing like Oh my goodness! Props to them. Honestly, they just they work so hard. Oh yeah, she she was in one one horror movie because she was talking about it. She would she would kill people and cut out their eyes and then <laughs> cook, and she would cook their eyes and eat them. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, all right, so so I guess I'll get away from horror now. <laughs> So there's a little like interview segment, Rocco. Yeah, 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 yeah. What do you like doing in your free time when you're not singing and acting? Um, oh, it's so hard when you have passion for like your work. It's just really, really hard because like you spend every like other spare moment just doing things, just sort of build your craft, right. like build your business. And that's the thing, like when you have your own business, like I mean, you know, being an actor, that's a business. Well, right? yeah, exactly. So Right. So you just think about everything else, like your admin, your marketing, everything else. It's just like you just can't stop thinking about it. But when I actually have a breather, I like watching cartoons. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, it's so weird because like, uh, like that's probably like all I sort of like watch. Like I just love cartoons. Um, Which ones but, do you like? You know, um, I love DuckTales. Like, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just put it in the background and so it's like friends right like you can just put it in the background and just like oh it's like white noise for you um <laughs> no but I just finished them watching Carmen San Diego and I was like man okay, this yeah. has to be made into a live action like film and I probably think it would be but yeah it definitely so, should yeah um I, I I like um spy sort of um animated movies oh, um nice. yeah Oh wow! See now, um, you mentioned duck, duck, duck tails, and I'm I'm humming duck tails. Ooh, woo -woo. <laughs> <laughs> they get stuck in your red. Duck tails. Woo -hoo. <laughs> as soon as you said that, I was like humming this song in my head. It's, I'm like, oh. do you know what? I actually feel that like older cartoons has such soul to them. Yeah, like, definitely. it's just timeless. I like classic things. Um, I think that's also what I sort of enjoy in terms of like movies and stuff. I love wholesome shows. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of like films that like I feel a lot of people wouldn't be watching these days that they are oh, missing yeah. out. Yeah. Like um, yeah. Uh, like um, Father of the Bride. Um. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 I just. Oh, I love everything that like Steve Martin like accent. I'm just like a whole like Steve Martin fan because it's just so okay. much wholesome. Yeah. Um, I mean, one of my fondest memories, like I, I sort of grew up um, in a divorced family, but when my parents were still together, they mm -hmm. sort of um spent a lot of our I, I think that's why I sort of like love acting as well, because just movies just bring people together. Yeah. Definitely. Um, but like we just spent like hours watching a lot of like wholesome shows like okay. Meryl Streep shows you know like Martin yeah Steve Martin and stuff oh yeah. wow so good yeah nice nice yeah Steve 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 Martin's great like he's funny he's like he's he doesn't have to try to be funny you know I what know. I mean he's just like just like one of those like 
brands of actors like a, an, an old dad sort of like yeah, yeah, dad. Exactly. yeah and it's he just says all these things that a typical dad would and like I think that's what my dad like wanted me to watch it because like you have to understand what I mean um, yeah true <laughs> yeah no, but it's good <laughs> and what about songs like what kind of music is on your playlist I'm an old soul I love jazz okay okay I love I love jazz like those kind of like like Billie Holiday like it feels like you have like an old record playing in the background sort of thing um that's like my go-to's like just oh, feeling like if I could like sort of transport back in time that is the era that I would love to sort of like live in oh, you know right. always like girls just walking around in their heels and you know like <laughs> girls these days are just like sneakers everything um but no it's just, I feel like there's just so much class in the like era and stuff yeah the, yeah def- definitely like the like the jazz days when jazz was like big everyone had a different way of dressing yeah no it's just really um, i feel like they need to bring the jazz age back because it's just i feel jazz like um, and blues ja- yeah jazz and blues yes, yes. Like, all done in us known and everything so I, I feel like a lot of my um playlists are um, either jazz or like chill hop um sort of thing um um and i i sort of you know listen to a lot of christian music and stuff but okay. um you know christian music are not boring um and i can be a testament to that because like there's this some um, worship band called isla vista worship that just does chill hop um so it's just oh, one wow. of those like lo-fi vibes like in the background but like just oh, wow. you know just singing like sort of like christian music and stuff so yeah like those kind of music just chill i think all right all right i like that <laughs> <laughs> And I usually ask people, but you all already said it. I, I usually ask people. No, I stole your line. <laughs> I, I usually ask them what their their go-to karaoke song usually is if they're out doing karaoke. I hate already. karaoke. Do you know what? This is like a common theme. Like, I feel like professional singers, when they're asked, do you actually go karaoke a lot? And we're like, no. And I know why. Because, do you know, those karaoke scores at the end of, uh-huh. like, they, like, grade you. And if you go, like, with, like, muggles, I call people who are not in the industry muggles. So when you <laughs> go with muggles, like, they'll somehow get, like, a really high score in the karaoke, like, 99 or, like, 98 and stuff. And when we try, like, and we hit all these, like, notes and all these timing and everything else, they give us a freaking, like, 75 score out of 100. <laughs> and I am not okay with that. <laughs> well, yeah, you shouldn't be, especially since you are a real singer. So, you know, <laughs> so, so, yeah, you shouldn't get a score like that. Yes. Um, but if I have to go to um, a, like karaoke and stuff, which we do like in Chinese New Year every single year, okay. um, I would have to choose a Disney song. And um, like, I feel like ugh, I'm going to say this is such a typical like Asian thing, but I'm going to say Reflections because yeah yeah like yeah, yeah. Like, yeah like it's just got like all the high notes and it makes uh-huh. you feel like you just want to express yourself um but other than that i love like jazz standards like diana crawl um flying into the moon yeah it's always like an easy way to sort of ease into it like warm up a bit and then after that belt like at the end okay okay nice. <laughs> <laughs> and what was like the last song that was stuck in your head like how ducktales is right now in mine <laughs> Oh bless. Um oh my goodness. I, I I listen to so much songs each day. It's not funny. Um, but most recently it's um called Heart of the Father by Ryan Ellis and D-O-E, Doe, that's how, how you pronounce your name. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um yeah, it's it's a very like it's a very like um hip hop sort of mixed with like pop vibes. Um so it, I think like a lot of my songs that I like listening to are like very chill, but I get to like belt at the end sort of thing and express like all the hidden emotions in my heart. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, that's a very catchy song, but I've been like stuck in like my like shower, like moods and stuff. Okay. Okay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and it, what, what junk food do you like to eat the most? I, I, I mean, everyone knows we all can't eat junk food every single day but if you know what's your favorite go to junk food when you're in the mood for it 
this is so funny because everyone that I meet on set, like the the crew from like Shang Chi, said that like you look like a vegan, and I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> like, I don't know what that means. Um, but I do for a lot of people. I do eat junk food and bless junk food. Um, I love Korean fried chicken. Oh my like, god, I love that. Yes, I, I I love fried chicken in general. Like I just. Like when I'm having like one of those down days, I know like Korean fried chicken and for all the Korean food eaters, tteokbokki, like the rice cake oh, together gosh. with the fried chicken, like it's just the bomb. Like the, oh my God. the gochujang fried chicken is just life of me. It's so good. Yeah. So I could yeah. eat that like, yeah, whenever I'm oh, down yeah. and stuff, it just picks me up. The first time I tried Korean fried chicken I loved it and and I I can't even like do like KFC or churches now I'm like, yeah, like when like, I want fried chicken you. I'm like I need Korean fried chicken huh? yeah it's like that's the way Korean fried chicken like without the <laughs> sauce like that's just fried chicken like you need a sauce like yeah exactly yeah. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. I was like, oh, when, when I was like, oh my God. I said, why didn't I try this sooner? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and you say you're a big tea tea drinker. What is your your favorite tea? Um, I love herbal teas. Okay. Um, I feel like whenever I drink herbal teas, they sort of melt my brain, if that makes sense. Like like I'll be like drinking like lemongrass ginger sort of tea and with like uh, takes <laughs> the stress away and because I sing there's a lot of like vocal teas as well that like oh. has licorice root and it's really good like it's just herbal teas in general oh. it's really healthy yeah all about that health life and junk food life so you know, <laughs> gotta be so, balanced with everything <laughs> but you see now when you when you're eating junk food you should have a hot cup of tea while you're eating the junk see, food see that is that is a very chinese mentality so when you ever go whenever you go to a chinese restaurant right like seriously think about this they always serve like hot tea yeah right? true There's you're right that, you're correct? right so the chinese people have this thing called yin yin yang where it's black and white and so they say it's all about the balance so when you eat kiri food like all the fried foods they serve in chinese restaurants mm-hmm. you have to drink something that sort of melts like the cholesterol's away so basically oh. that's yeah mind blown oh that makes a lot of sense yes okay all right <laughs> now i know the reason behind when they put the tea out on the table yeah. <laughs> well you're good <laughs> yeah. and um is there anything coming up next for you that you would like to plug like uh, a, a, acting music yeah, I mean, ugh, these days I've just been really blessed because um, aside from like acting and music, I also do um bridal modeling. So like that has been keeping wow. me busy, like on the background. It's such a good way to sort of um like earn money and be a Disney princess for like a day. So I just feel like it's like a dream job. Honestly, I just get to dress up in like bridal dresses and take photo shoots in beautiful places that I can only dream of. Um, so I have that always going on um, every week. Um, and recently I just shot a commercial, I think, a week like this month with the snooker world champion his name is judd trump so um that's coming up soon um and i also just wrapped play um and coming up i'm actually um working on producing something uh with an australian director so oh, yeah, yeah just different things going on in the background i think to just keep me busy oh, um yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. and lastly is where can fans follow you at um, you can follow me at Instagram. I think that's the best way to follow me at Grace Chim, C-H-I-M-M, Mary Mary. Um, they always confuse me with Chin um, because it sounds easier. Um, but no, it's with an M. Um, so yeah, that's sort of the best way to sort of um, keep up with me. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day and, and doing this. It was really fun chatting with you and meeting you and, and singing DuckTales. And- <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you so much for the opportunity. It's been a true pleasure, Rocco. You've entertained my Saturday afternoon. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll have a good rest. 
rest of the day and probably going to be drinking tea since you're in London. So yes. <laughs> you have to do as the London people do. Okay. Have a good one. And, and right. thanks. Thanks again. It was good meeting you. Not a problem. Thanks, Rocco. Appreciate it. No All problem. Right. Bye.